the NFL alumni uh, came to me and basically said, we heard what you said, Brad, and, and we think this could be the lifetime sport. Very and that's, cool. that's the whole idea is, is you can be 25 and come out and do well, and you can be 85 and come out and do well and have fun at your own level, and, and it's going to continue to grow. event today at the Future of Pickleball. We are at the Super Bowl experience in 2023 in Phoenix, Arizona. I have an amazing guest that's bringing some very cool things from pro football to the pickleball space. Brad Cousineau, I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Brad is a guy that approached Selkirk about the fact that they wanted to have an experience involving pickleball at the Super Bowl. Tell us what that was about. Um, Former NFL players uh, down through the years um, play at a very high rate. They're big men, uh, and many of them, after they get out of football, they pack on a lot of weight, and it's not good. It's obesity, and it's not healthy. And so uh, the NFL alumni uh, approached me about the concept of, of a lifetime sport. What could be a lifetime sport, not just for the NF former NFL alumni people, but also for the fans? And as a result, pickleball has become very popular. And about a year and a half ago, I started playing, and I lost 37 pounds without trying. I wasn't on a diet. I wasn't trying. I was just playing every day, having fun, having an experience. And as a result of that, I started losing weight, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I started reading about the exercise of being intermittent and this, you know, going hard and then slowing down and, and all the benefits of that type of exercise, which is not done when you run and you're doing uh, cardio workouts and things like that. That's what this really provided. And the NFL alumni uh, came to me, uh, Russ, and basically said, we heard what you said, Brad, and, and we think this could be the lifetime sport. Very and that's, cool. that's the whole idea is, is you can be 25 and come out and do well, and you can be 85 and come out and do well and have fun at your own level, and, and it's going to continue to grow. Very cool. Very cool indeed. You know, I'd really like to hear, um, I know you've got a really interesting life story, and you've done a book about it, and I'll come back to that in a bit. But what was your experience from the time you got into college playing football and through your pro career? Well, if you've ever seen the movie Rudy, I was a Rudy. I was a walk-on. Um, I didn't get any scholarship offers. They said I was too small, too short, too slow. And I needed to go to college and get out of the environment. I was, I was raised in a very dysfunctional home. And uh, so I sat and wrote uh, uh, 40 letters to uh, all the college coaches within a 200-mile radius of Toledo, Ohio, which is where I grew up. Got no response, followed up with phone calls, ended up working in a storm sewer, digging out all the craps of, out of the sewers to pay for my first quarter of school at Miami University, Miami of Ohio. And I ended up going there as a walk-on, and against overwhelming odds, I ended up doing very well, became an All-American, and, and ended up playing in the NFL for a number of years. Uh, I was the smallest linebacker in the NFL when I played, and, uh, but I, you can't measure heart. And, and I didn't have a lot of size, but I had a lot of heart. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice indeed. You know, actually, let's do this. Um, your book, Unwanted, Unworthy, and Unshackled, now this is available all over where books are sold, isn't it? Well, I, I, online right now. So it's Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and things like that. It just came out about uh, six weeks ago. And it's my story. I've given my story to hundreds of audiences and tens of thousands of people. Everybody loves an underdog story that makes it. And I have that, that story. It's, it's, it's a very compelling story. I was, I was practically beat every day. I was yelled and screamed at by my mom and dad. They had to get married because of me when they were 15 and 16 years of old. So, I, you know, and they were just coming from their background. Sure. And, and as a result of that, that's the way that I grew up. And I just, you know, like this, and I was told over and over again, you're no good, you'll never amount to anything and like that. And that's why the title says, Unwanted, Unworthy, Unshackled. And unshackled is 
stop believing the lies that I was told. And that's what ends up happening. Most people end up believing things that aren't true about themselves. And then they live that life. And I recognize that. And, um, and as a result, uh, in my talk, I, I, my story comes out. And that's what this book is about. And it's very compelling. Uh, I've got uh, two groups interested in turning it into a movie. Whether it happens or not, who knows? But the point is, is it's that kind of a story. People will get this at some. And I also made it very family friendly. I took all the cuss words and the curse words that I was raised with out because one, I don't talk that way now. And the second thing is, is that I want people to give this to their kids and grandkids and my kids and grandkids. So. I made it so it's family friendly, and uh, and people have really appreciated it because uh, it comes across as a great read. Very nice. So now with the the life history that we're talking about, the fact that you made it an All American collegiate football player, you played in the pros. How did you get into pickleball? Well, uh, you know I've been retired for quite a while, and uh, so I used to play a lot of racquetball, and um, you know racquetball was a great game, but uh, but. Uh, about seven years ago, I had my right hip replaced, and by the time I got done healing from the right hip, it was f hard to find any place to play racquetball and or with my old racquetball buddies because the places were closing down. Oh. And so I was doing all kinds of other things for exercise, and at a club that I was at, they were setting up these courts, these little mini nets. And I said, what in the heck is that? And they go, oh, that's pickleball. And I go, pickleball? What a weird name that is. <laughs> and, uh, but I saw them play, and I go, hmm. So the next time they set up, I went out there, and, and uh, this lady that was, you know, 10 years older than me, and she, she helped me learn how to pick up a paddle and play. And I picked it up pretty fast because of my background. Uh, anyone that's ever played ping pong or badminton or anything with a hand-eye coordination, hitting a ball, you can pick it up very fast. That's the neat thing about pickleball. It's easy to pick up. And it's fun. You can have fun the first time you play. And, uh, and, and, and that's what, why it's growing so fast. Very cool. Very cool. Now, in, we're here at the Super Bowl event. Um, this is really quite amazing. Are there many NFL players that are playing the game currently? Well, there, I, I believe we, we, we have no way of knowing because it's just coming out, but a lot of former NFL players and current players are buying into Major League uh, Pickleball. Um, it, it is the fastest growing sport for a purpose. I believe that there's probably a lot of people out there playing that are rec players and they just are playing off on a court and stuff like that. But more and more players are recognizing it for the value that it provides socially, um, uh, intellectual. I mean, it's a constant strategy going on as you're playing. So there's a strategy aspect to it. There's the social aspect, and the social is, is that you're meeting new people and having fun, and you're starting. You know, guys are starting to tease one another and doing stuff. I mean, it really is amazing. I was operated on uh, three months ago for my hip, left hip. I got that replaced. And I, I had such an outpouring from all the pickleball players that I had only known through pickleball. Yeah. It was like unbelievable. You know, they were like they're you know, wishing me well and asking what they could do to help. That's very unusual. You know, very when you're, cool when you're doing that. Very so, cool. Yeah. Now, my final question to you is: What do you see in your magic, your secret sauce? If you were to have pickleball for the NFL alumni players, what do you think they're going to be getting out of this? Well, the the benefits are. Multiple, you know. First of all, cardiovascularly, they're out moving and they're out doing things. It's like that. Most NFL players are quote celebrities in their local marketplace, so they get invited to a lot of golf outings and things like that. And as a result, they they go there, they get wined and dined, they uh, ride in a cart, they hit some <laughs> balls, they drink some beer and or other stuff, and and then they have a big meal afterwards. That's not real healthy when you're in, you know, as you're as you're trying to do that. Whereas you could go out and pick a ball and play an hour and a half to two hours, burn a ton of calories. You can still go out and have a beer or or eat or something, but you would be doing it in such a way that it's beneficial to you. And that's why I, how I lost the weight. I was not trying to lose weight. Yeah, yeah. And um, people kept saying, "Boy, you're you're looking really thin, Brad," and stuff like that. And so I would just share with you, um, uh, the players when they pick this up. 
it, it's it's competitive, and we all are competitive. If we're playing the NFL, you're competitive. Yeah. And so that that comes back in. So it's fun. It's competitive. It's got uh, social implications, and the mental aspects are phenomenal. Uh, it, it, it it's a constant chess match that's going on. Brad, thank you so much for sitting with us. Here we are at the Super Bowl. We're going to hear from more people. And (laughs) my book, I have to get it. You guys, I promise you, you will love. It's an easy read, and everybody says it's one of the the, uh, most amazing books that they've read because I'm totally transparent. I tell it the way that it is. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Brad. It's sure been fun. 